Okay, let's look at question five here. Um, this one is really, uh, you got a couple skills that you need to have, and, and the first one is determining what consumer equilibrium is. And remember, consumer equilibrium is when the last dollar spent on each good is equal to, to each other. And in this one, a little different, you have three goods. So instead of two, you've now got three. So we've got good A, good B, and good C three different goods. We have a budget of $24 per week to spend on these three goods. And then we have our marginal utility values for each. So good A, here's our marginal utility. And you can see that as we consume more, it diminishes. That's the law of diminishing marginal utility. Uh, quantity for B and quantity for C and the corresponding marginal utilities. So looking at question A, if, if A is $2, so A is 2, B costs us 3, and C is 1. How much are we going to buy of each? So I have set up my table, and this is the data that you have from the question. I just put it out here. The first thing that you need to look at and determine is what is our marginal utility per dollar. So we take the marginal utility and we divide it by the price of the good. So 50 <clears throat> divided by the price, which is 2, it's going to be 25, 40 divided by 2 is 20, 15, 10, and 7.5. So we're just taking the margin utility and dividing it by the price, which gives us the margin utility per dollar. Okay, so do that for each one of them. Uh, so 75... We're dividing this one by 3, 25, 20, yeah. 10, and I don't have my perfect math in my head here. So this is 13.3, a little less than 7, divided by 3. This is 6.6, .6. so that's our utility per uh, per dollar. Um, then we look at C divided by 1. That's just going to be the same. Okay, so now we're able to go and kind of see what is going to be, where are we going to see some, some overlap here. And all of them being equal, uh, I see right away 10, margin utility of 10, 10, 10, that jumps out at me. We'll see if our quantity is equal and, and it works out. So if at uh, uh, a quantity of 4, okay, my margin utility per dollar is 10. So 4 at $2 gives me 8 there. Um, I would buy four at three dollars. My utility is ten. So four at three equals twelve, and then four at one equals four. So eight, twelve. That gives me twenty. Twenty-four. Add those up. Twenty-four dollars. And if I remember right which I hope I do. Yeah, $24 per week. So our quantities would be four of each because we're finding the corresponding, sorry here. Our quantity would be four of each because uh, our corresponding marginal utility per dollar is 10 at each of those. All right, Let's look at the other questions here. Um, if the price of A rises to $4 while the others stay. So now what we got to do is we got a little difference here. So we got marginal utility per dollar at a price of 4. So price is going up. So now we have to divide each of these by okay, a different price. So 50 divided by 4 would be 12.5. 40 divided by 4, that's the new price, it's going to be 10. 30, divide, uh, 
30 divided by 4, 7.5, 20 divided by 4 is 5, 15 divided by 4, doesn't really matter, we're not going to use that one anyway, but we'll do it just for fun, 3.75. So these are our new marginal utilities based per dollar based on the new price, okay, based on the new price. So we come down here and we see uh, number 10, which is one that sticks out again, um, equal to the others. Now, if I buy two, and it makes sense, at $4 now, because the price is doubled, okay, that gives me my same budget of eight. Others two have stayed the same. I've got my same budget and everything would fit. So looking at the next one there, Uh, if the price rises of four, how much does he purchase in, in, in equilibrium? It would be two of A, two of A, four of B, and four of C, and we'd still be in equilibrium. Okay, if that makes sense. And then the last one, use the information from part A and B and draw the demand curve for good A and indicate, well, really, margin utility in consumer equilibrium is how we derive demand curves. And when you get into upper level college econ courses, we really kind of break down and this is how we actually derive individual demand curves. Um, so we're just kind of doing a simplistic view. So if you look at it here, and we're assuming ceteris paribus, right? Everything else stays the same. Our original, right, at $2, right, good A. You can look right here, good A. At $2, we were gonna have a quantity of four so here's our price, here's our quantity, and we'd come out quantity of four. That would be our first spot on that demand curve. Uh, let's slide this over. Okay, quantity of four. Price increases up to $4. Okay, price, everything else stays the same. Other prices stay the same. Okay, goes up and we'd have a quantity of two, remember? Because when we changed the price, we changed our margin utility per dollars, we found a new quantity and that was two. So in essence, there is our simplified demand curve for good A, two points on it. And that's what you would need to do. Hope that helps, hope that makes sense.